I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to reveal it. Okay, that's enough. Let's put that away. Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here and welcome to the Retro Future. Today we're going to be unboxing a parcel from Sendico. In this parcel is a bunch of seriously cool and rare stuff that I've ordered from Japan. This video has been sponsored by PCB Way. Are you looking to up your personal projects? Well, check out PCB Way because they offer all of the services you might need to step up your game. They offer 3D printing services, CNC machining, injection molding, and every single type of PCB you could possibly imagine, including flexible ones. Check out the link in the description below to PCB Way and get your first order for free. So let's get into the unboxing. Uh, as you can see, I've got a rug over here, a bed frame over here, and I mean, I'm in literally in a complete state right now, but the bedroom is almost finished and that is the most important part. But the other really important part is opening this Sendico parcel. So this has over 30 different items inside of it and it's probably about two months worth of orders. And we've got things from t-shirts to televisions to hoodies to literally everything. I'm super excited. Let's take a look at what we have. So I'm gonna get rid of the t-shirts because people probably don't really care too much about them and they're also not relating to retro in any way. Uh, we've also got some joggers. These are for Freya. Again, they don't really, uh, they're not really that relevant to retro um, gaming or anything. Um, but this right here, this might be interesting to some people. This is a hat that I found. Uh, it was quite expensive, I think, but it's a Japanese Tokyo edition Stussy cap, which as you can see is really really vintage and very worn and uh, in quite bad condition But I freaking love that look at that sort of sun damage there super cool uh, very excited about that So this is a Stussy cap again, but it's a corduroy version as you can see um, but unfortunately it does look like this is more of a sort of um snapback cap as opposed to like a baseball cap and I wanted a baseball cap so I don't think it's the right one but it wasn't that expensive but anyway it's super cool there regardless so this is another item uh, it's just a little wallet I'm not gonna bother showing that again nothing retro related at all this is a an interesting one this is an official Eneloop, which is a, uh, a rechargeable battery manufacturer, um, Nintendo collaboration that's a DS charger. So you shove in your rechargeable AA batteries into here, and then you can charge your Nintendo DS with it. And I thought it was really interesting that it's an actual um, official licensed Nintendo product. Um, I don't know, I just thought it was quite cool. That'll probably feature in a DS accessory video at some point. Speaking of DS accessories, this is another one into the uh, Nintendo uh, Game Boy slot, you can slide in these which have tiny little microfiber cloths on the end of them so that you can uh, clean your screen. Again, another really cool little Japanese accessory that will feature in a video at some point. Wow, what's this one? Okay, what's this one? This is a Club Nintendo game that's exclusive to Club Nintendo. It's not for resale, and you could only obtain it through the Club Nintendo points scheme. Really cool little thing. Very excited to showcase that. And still on the topic of Nintendo DSs, this is an original Nintendo DS, which as you can probably make out, is super, super destroyed. But I want to do a full restoration to this thing. So very excited to do that. That'll be on the channel at some point. This is one that we've actually looked at before. Um, this is a Tetris micro card. So this is it. I have made a video on this before, but it's just basically a sort of a business card sized um, Tetris console type thing. It's really, really cool. Um, I managed to get this one, I think, for like seven pounds, which is a, an absolute bargain. I think it's Arduino based. You can see they're powered by Arjaboy, but it's an official Tetris product. And a friend of mine wanted one, so I managed to find one. Now, this is an interesting one. This is not something I ordered, the Samsung Galaxy A21 screen protector. But I imagine because these are sent from sellers in Japan to Sendico's warehouse, I reckon the seller of this item has probably just used this phone screen protector box to ship the item that I bought. Let's take a look. Yes, it is. Yeah. So this is something that I've actually, uh, I actually was quite interested by. It's a Japanese exclusive game and watch merchandise. 
I mean, I never saw that in the UK, but it's basically a tiny little acrylic stand. And you can see there, Amazon.co.jp, which is for uh, Japan. So yeah, it must have been something that people got with the pre-orders of the um, Zelda Game & Watch that we didn't get anywhere else in the world. So I thought that was kind of cool. I want to show you that off on my, uh, on my second channel at some point. Right, what else have I ordered? Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember ordering this. Ah, how do you get into this thing? So this is a tiny little DS stylus that you put, I think, on the tip of your finger or your pinky finger. I don't know. But anyway, it's just a tiny little miniature hand. I, I don't even know what that is. I don't know why I bought that. So this is something that I saw that really interested me. Um, this looks like a handmade leather case for the Nintendo DS that's extremely high-end. Like a really bougie sort of Nintendo DS product. You can see there the box is really, really nice and presentable. And then there you have it. A proper real leather looking i mean i don't know I'm, i imagine that's real leather i'm gonna have to do some research on it and stuff but yeah it looks like real leather but it's a nintendo ds case how bougie is that okay now this is something that i've been after for a really long time but i've just been waiting to find one for a really good price this was a uh, product that was released on Club Nintendo that was a remake of the first ever Game & Watch. And you can see here, so it looks exactly like the original one. Um, it's just on the back, it says, you know, Club Nintendo and stuff. And we're going to take a look at it properly on the, on the channel, but it's Nintendo's first sort of remake console. Um, it's a super cool little game. So I'm actually excited to have one that's not so rare and expensive to use because you can pick these up in Japan for like $30. They're super cheap, but... But yeah, I just thought it'd be quite cool to maybe do a comparison video on my second channel, taking a look at the uh, the differences between the new one and the original. We can even take it apart and have a look inside and whatnot. Now this is another one that's just super cool. I bought it faulty. It's going to make a great uh, bit of content on my main channel, doing a restoration of it. This right here is the Famitsu Edition Game Boy Light. This one's got a faulty screen, but it does look like it's complete with the battery cover and stuff. You can see there just how bad the damage is on the screen. But besides that, it's in really good condition. A massive scratch going along there as well, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but hopefully it works. Hopefully we can get it going if it doesn't. Um, so yeah, there we go. The Famitsu Game Boy Light. If I recall properly, I think I paid about $200 for this or something like that. So yeah, super cool little thing. By the way, if you want to check out Sendico, if you use the link in the description below, um, I actually get a little bit of affiliate commission um, off of that, which is how I've been able to buy most of this stuff. So yeah, I really appreciate when people um, click on that link in the description and order stuff through my affiliate link. Um, so this is a purple, atomic purple Game Boy Color. Nice and simple. I'll probably use that for a mod at some point. It's, it's not in the best condition. It's very worn down, missing the sticker and stuff. I don't think this was very expensive. I think it was probably about $10, but it's got no battery uh, leakage or anything. And uh, it's got a nice looking screen. So happy days. Now, this is an interesting one. This is a universal remote in the shape of a Famicom controller. I'm not going to bother getting it all out and everything now. It's going to be a second channel video. But yeah, what a cool little thing. It's a Famicom controller, but a universal remote. On the topic of Game & Watch Ball, I actually managed to find another one. Now, I have no idea what condition it's in because there wasn't many photos, but... It does actually look like it's in really good condition. Yeah, that is way better than my one. Now, the screen is really damaged, but that is fine because I'll be able to do a little bit of mix and matching to get myself one that's in really good condition. And I do think these are going to be a good investment because this is Nintendo's first ever gaming handheld. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have one in much better condition. It actually works really well, though. So maybe it's just a burnt polarizer job because my one was in really bad condition internally. Let's see if we can get a game going. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to take a look at that. I have done one on my main channel already, so maybe this can be a little sort of revised second channel video. But anyway, Game & Watch Ball, the original one from 1980. Super exciting. Another little uh, thing just kicking about here. This is a big stylus. There's a reason I bought this. I'll show you that in a little bit later on. Right, what have we got next? Let's take a look. Oh, Perfect timing. This is what goes with that big stylus. I don't know why, I just found this thing quite interesting looking. It's a massive stand for the DS that holds 
the stylus in there. I don't know what its what its use is. I mean, it just props it up. Maybe it's for like picto chat, make it a sort of a desktop computer type thing, but I don't know. It will feature in a, a DS accessory video at some point um, on the channel. Right, what have we got here? <gasps> oh yes, this one is exciting. So this is something that is just a mix of two of my favorite things, Game Boys and Walkmans. This right here is a cassette boy, a cassette player in the shape of a Game Boy. I've got no idea if it works. It's made by a company called Manny. I don't think it's gonna be licensed by Nintendo at all. But yeah, what a beast of a thing. Look at that. Super happy with it. And it's in red as well, which just looks so cool. Yeah, I have no idea if that works. I hope it does. That'd be really, really cool. Maybe I should chuck some batteries in it. Okay, I've put some batteries in it and it doesn't work. But I have had a look here on the battery terminal and it's pretty rusty. So hopefully it's not been exposed to any water and it's just a little bit of battery leakage. And hopefully it's a, an isolated issue just to that one area because I do really want to get this thing up and running. So that will be a, a video at some point on the channel. Now, let's take a look at something super rare. Uh, this is a Nintendo DS, it's a Pokemon edition. Now, the reason I bought this, it's a little bit late to the party, but the Nintendo Switch Lite recently had a limited edition Pokemon version released for it, or a special edition, I'm not sure if it's limited edition, but um, either way, this is the DS that that artwork was modeled off. Now, it's a beautiful box, absolutely stunning, as you can see there. And hopefully, you'll be able to make out there the design on the back. You can see there that it's absolutely identical. So I thought it might be quite cool to do a sort of a comparison of the two somehow at some point. Um, I don't know if it's a bit too late now to be doing that. But either way, it's a cool thing to have in my collection. Right, what else have we got in here? Let's take a look at this one. Now, this is quite a simple one. Uh, it's something that I saw for really cheap. It's a bit battered up, but I thought maybe we could give it some love um, on the second channel or something. This is a Play It Loud black Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, it's a DMG. Um, as you can see here, it's, you know what? That's actually not in bad condition. It's just missing the screen lens and the A unfortunately has been rubbed off. But yeah, it feels actually like it's hardly been used, which is really interesting. All the volume wheels and contrast wheels are nice and stiff. The buttons are nice and stiff. Uh, the back's not actually got many scratches on the uh, where the cartridge goes in. So. I don't know, maybe this is in a lot better condition than it looks somehow. Maybe it's just not been stored very well, but yeah. Excited about that anyhow. Uh, it's a little black Play It Loud Game Boy. Right, now let's take a look at this one. Now this is something that I've been after for a very, very, very long time. And wow, is it in better condition than I'd ever dreamed of owning. Holy crap, this right here is a big box Game Boy Tetris. Super, super rare. And it's the Minuet version. Honestly, one of the rarest versions of Tetris ever, uh, period, across all Tetris games. This is possibly one of the rarest one. Very few were made. I'm gonna show you why it's worth so much um, in a video on my main channel, but yeah. That is in stunning condition. I'm definitely going to have to get a box protector made for that. I'm actually shaking because I've seriously been after one of these for so long. Okay, what else have we got? This is a Game Boy Color, an Atomic Purple Game Boy Color. Nothing too special about it, but I didn't pay a lot of money for it. So I think it was probably about $40, $40 or something. As you can see, pretty nice condition, Atomic Purple Game Boy Color. I don't actually own one of those in box, so that's really nice. Right, we're getting down now to the nitty gritty. This is a green Play It Loud DMG Game Boy. Um, I'm going to take a look at that on a video at some point on my second channel. So I'm going to slot that down here. This is one that I'm not going to be showing very much of in this video. But this is an accessory for the Game Boy that I've never heard of or never seen before um, until about a couple of weeks ago. I fi finally got my hands on one. It did look like there was a selling a few, so maybe it's new old stock. But um, I got outbid on loads of different ones. But I finally did manage to win one, um, which is very exciting. Now, these are some pop stations. I'll show them off on some videos. But yeah, PSP and Nintendo DS pop stations. Quite funny looking. Excited to take a look at those. Um, let's slot them down to the side. Now, we've got something here. 
that I've left till the end because it was at the bottom of the box and because I don't want many people to know that this video is going to be dropping on my channel. I'm going to give you a very small sneak preview of what this is. But this is my holy grail. This is the rarest and most expensive thing I own. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to reveal it. Okay, that's enough. Let's put that away. Now, this is not something we're going to take a look at right now. Um, I want to save it for a second channel video, but what it is, is an old Sony CRT. It's a portable little Sony CRT. You can sort of see the, uh, the front of it there. Absolutely tiny little screen, but it's a very high-end machine. So very excited to show that off on my second channel. Uh, definitely go over and subscribe to that because a lot of the content uh, that will be uploaded on all of this stuff will be on that channel. Massive thank you to everyone watching. Go and check out Sendico. It's an amazing website and their, their service is just incredible. Uh, very, very pleased with it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.